The introduction of the game of rugby football in Victoria is credited to the Royal Navy, whose ships had been on duty in these waters since 1865, when Esquimalt was declared a Pacific Naval Establishment for the British. In October of 1873, the shadow of war with Russia brought the detached squadron to Esquimalt Harbour, and the Victoria rugby men rounded up 17 volunteers to play the crew from Her Majesty's ship Repulse. After that scoreless match, it proved very difficult to recruit players. Newspaper announcements of football meetings at the Garrick Head Pub failed to draw enough men to field a team. But over the next few seasons, the keen ones met at Beacon Hill to pick sides for scrimmage games. The British colonist newspaper first reported a game being played on October 28, 1877. The paper reported that despite poor weather, a large crowd saw the Navy defeat Victoria by one field goal to nil. That did the trick, and at the next practice, more than 40 rugby hopefuls turned up. It would be another eight seasons before the fleet returned, but when they did, more than a thousand Victorians gathered at Beacon Hill for a band concert, cricket game, and a rugby match against HMS Triumph's crew. The game of rugby then began to grow steadily. Victoria fielded a fine 15 to play against Shimanus, Cowichan, and the Nival Rovers. With Vancouver and New Westminster showing an interest, a provincial rugby union was formed. Except for one season in 1895, Nanaimo was the top team in BC until 1900, when the Victoria Rugby Club racked up a nine-game winning record to claim the BC title and the first McKechnie Cup. Interest in rugby here on the island ebbed after that, but was reignited in 1908 when the James Bay Athletic Association formed a strong team. Two years later, that Victoria Rugby Club reclaimed the BC title. Nanaimo re-entered under the Hornets' name, and along with the Navy and Army regiments, James Bay and the Wanderers, a strong five-team Island League began competing for the Bernard Cup, with many boys who began their rugby in school now playing for the clubs. The mostly old country players on the Wanderers team led their squad to a second McKechnie Cup, but then World War I began, and that left only the schoolboy teams to keep rugby going. After the armistice, local boys signed up with the JBAA team, and along with the rebuilt Oak Bay Wanderers, they jump-started the game along with the Vancouver Island Athletic Association and War Vets sides. Through the 1920s, Bob McGinnis and Bob Travis led James Bay to eight Bernard Cup victories. Touring visits by New Zealand, Maori, New South Wales, and Japan teams also helped our rep team sharpen their skills. The early years of the Dirty Thirties saw the formation of service teams. The Navy, the 5th Regiment, and the Canadian Scottish recruited many of the top local players to join their reserve units for some wages. New Zealand paid another visit, playing in front of a large crowd at the renewed McDonald Park grounds and grandstands in James Bay. But when World War II broke out, most teams folded. The survival of rugby was put back into the hands of local public and private schools. After the war, a New Zealand tour game in 1948 drew a large crowd and revived interest in rugby. But even so, for the next two decades, rugby in Victoria was largely held together by the Bays and the Wanderers. The Keeners were numerous. Guys like Alex McDonald, Harry Turner, Dick Ellis, Hugh Farquhar, Reg Wenman, and Derek Heidley. In the mid-1960s, rugby in Victoria began a period of unprecedented growth as UVic entered and became a dominant force in the game. The Castaways Club added rugby to their activities and won the Bernard Cup in 1972, a year that also saw Nanaimo, Cowichan, Alberni and Velox join the Island Rugby League. A number of rugby playing teachers began to promote mini rugby at school and a junior high league soon began producing some very good young talent. Before long, almost every high school in Greater Victoria had a team in the Howard Russell Cup competition. And that brings us to this chap, Gary Johnston. Gary first played rugby at Gordon Head Junior High under the coaching of Morris Priest, and from there he went on to play with the Oak Bay Wanderers for Dick Ellis, Don Burgess, and Ed Bryans. When he entered UVic, he joined the Vikings rugby team coached by Howard Gerwing. During his varsity years, the Vikes were in several championship finals for the Roundsfell Cup. In 1971, they won that championship, and 40 years later, the guys are still talking about that game. After graduating, Gary began teaching at Oak Bay High and also joined the James Bay Bays Rugby Club. Tillman Briggs had taken over as James Bay Athletic Association playing coach in 1963 and had led his men to four Bernard Cup wins. Jono, as Gary was known, joined the Bays in 1974 and very quickly became their on-field leader and team captain. It was that combination of Briggs as coach and Johnston as captain that powered the James Bay Rugby dynasty of the 1970s. As a Victoria Crimson Tide player and captain, Gary led his team to win five McKechnie Cup titles in six years. 
He was also a BC Rep player on teams that won seven Canadian interprovincial Carling Bowls. Johnson was capped for the Canada vs. France match in 1978, in 1980 was named Most Valuable Player at the American Monterey Tournament, and retired as a player in 1981. He had started his coaching career back in 1972 at Oak Bay High, where his teams continued to add to the school's long list of Howard Russell Cup wins. Gary also started the annual boot game match with St. Michael's University School. He is BC's most successful high school rugby coach, having taken six of his Oak Bay Barbarians teams to provincial championships. He powered through all the logistics to take his school teams on British tours, not once, but twice. In 1982, Gary became James Bay's second division coach, and they went on to win the Vancouver Island Championship. He later directed the first division team to four BC titles. He also coached the Victoria Junior Crimson Tide when they won the Japan Cup with a record of six wins and no losses. And he coached the Senior Tides to win the McKechnie Cup in 1984. At the provincial level, Gary coached the BC Junior Sides to three straight Canadian Junior Championships, plus a win over the National School Team of Wales in 1983. He then co-coached the BC Boys on a tour of England and Scotland in 1985. He was also a BC Senior Player Selector and coach from 1984 to 87 and won Canadian Senior Interprovincial titles three of those four years, including a victory over Scotland in Vancouver. Gary coached our Canadian national teams at the under-17, under-19 and senior levels, was the coach of Team Canada at the first World Cup in 1987 and co-coach of our 2003 squad. When Canada failed to qualify for the 2005 U19 World Cup, Gary was recruited as coach to get things back on track and he did. Canada improved its ranking at both the 2006 and 07 Junior World Championships. Gary Johnson has had an illustrious career as a rugby player, and if his present path continues, he's heading for even greater honors as a coach. One thing is certain, Gary will not fail for want of dedication, determination, or detailed knowledge of the game. In fact, he just doesn't seem to know the word failure. One word that now will be in his vocabulary is inductee as we proudly induct into the Greater Victoria Sports Hall of Fame, Victoria rugby great Gary Jono Johnson. Um, the last time I was here was in 1996 when Tillman and Hans and the James Bay team were inducted into the hall. Uh, giant Gene Kaniski, self-proclaimed Canada's greatest athlete, uh, was the guest speaker. And that night I got a chance to go one-on-one -on -one with Giant Gene, who was uh, my childhood hero. Tonight, I would like to remove one item from my bucket list. That is to personally and publicly thank four men who have been a great influence in my rugby career. Morris Priest was a young, charismatic physical education teacher at Gordon Head Junior High. I was a 13-year-old who was mesmerized by this teacher, acting, running for student council, and playing rugby. That's what Mr. Priest was sponsoring, so that's what I was interested in. I was, it was largely because of Morris Priest that I chose rugby as my sport and teaching as my career. Thank you, Morris. When I was 16, Don Burgess entered my life. Don gave me the gift of passion when it came to rugby. Whether it was getting up at 3 a.m. and to listen over his shortwave radio to the New Zealand All Blacks playing at International, or listening to Don strumming his ukulele and singing The Hole in the Elephant's Bottom in Dick Ellis' basement, Burge made rugby fun and taught me to love the game. Thank you, Don. Alan Wharton was a visiting prof teaching at uh, the University of Victoria. He would played for the rugby for the national team of Australia, the Wallabies. Alan knew what it was like to play at the highest level and what it took to get there. He changed rugby at UVic from club rugby, which was basically you drank beer on Friday night, you played rugby on Saturday, and then you drank more beer at the tea party. Alan changed that to team rugby at UVic. Uh, we still drank a lot of beer, but we also ran over Mount Tolmy and up Sinclair Hill. And when the fields were too wet to train, the Vikes would go into the gym for tackling practice. Alan would teach, the reason we play this game is to win. If that's not correct, why, why do we keep score? 
Thank you, Ellen. And finally, Tillman Briggs. Tillman was the coach and leader at James Bay's, which is announced tonight as a 125 years old club. Tillman was a man's man who taught that 15 players doing the same thing, even if it was the wrong thing, would be more successful than 15 players doing their own thing. Tillman, the Bays were a team, and I was Till's captain, whose primary job was to keep the team on task. It worked, and the Bays won seven consecutive provincial championships in the 1970s. Huddy, huddy, Till. These four men, all teachers, are the reason that I'm being inducted into the Greater Victoria Sports Hall of Fame. And I want to thank all the rugby guys that came out tonight. Thank you.